bit of confusion out there what Team Sky are eating when they're riding. Uh, so I just typed in Team Sky feedback. Feedback's what you get when you're riding. Uh, when every single time I've got trained with pro riders, like I said, I've trained by over a thousand pro riders in Adelaide here. You know, big names, Wiggins, Froome, Contador, Evans, Lance, Al Valverde, everyone, man. And team car stops normally every hour or something, gives them some bottles, some sugar, some bananas, some gels. They have breakfast before they go out as well. And this is what you get, one rider will get in a feed bag. Uh, got some orange cake, rice, rice. Uh, I'm not sure what that one is, some sort of almond cake. And the gels, the sugar gels. You know, look it up. These are the sugar gels, CNP, one of their sponsors. So it's the sugar gels. They're having sugar, 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 sugars. In here, you got water, maybe a bit of Coca-Cola, lemonade, sports drink, sugar, sugar, sugars. So there's sugar fueled. But it's still a bit of confusion. So let's hear it from Team Sky, uh, the nutritionist, Nigel Mitchell, whom I agree with most of the time, especially when you're talking like this. This is legit nutrition talk right now. Let's click it on. It's called the BBC Horizon Sugar Versus Fat. We've got two twin brothers. They're on the bites. They've got the same fitness level. Everything's the same today, but one of them's on the keto diet and one of them's on the high carb diet. Let's check out what happens. Watch and pay attention. Have Get off. And what we're going to do now is we're going to race up the hill. So now we've got some food. So for Zandi, we've got butter. So it's one pat of butter, please. Okay, just one. Just right. one. And then I want you to take one in your pocket for eating on the way up. And then we've got a gel for you. And, and the, the same number of calories in the gel roughly, as the butter. Roughly, we've got the same number of calories in the gel as what we've got the butter, but the gel yeah. is sugar. There's special about either the butter or the gel. They're basically fat and sugar. So, right, I want you to ride at my pace. So I want us to control this as we're going up there. A little bit easier on the gears. That's it, perfect. You're in the same gear. Now it's time for the race up the hill between fat in red and sugar in blue. Then when we turn right, we're going to start just lifting it slightly. Are you OK? Yeah, I'm, I'm all right. Just push on a bit more, then. We're climbing the iconic and steep Box Hill in Surrey. And in the next few seconds, it's going to turn into a fat versus sugar race to the summit. Is that race now, boys? 177. Yeah. 154. Just keep next to each other if you can. OK? Right. You ready, both of you? Go! Sorry to interrupt. Just quickly want to say, the, one of the fat dude, the guy on high fat, his heart rate is higher because he's dehydrated. Because when you don't have enough carbohydrates, your blood plasma drops and your heart has to beat more effort to get the same amount of blood around. So the reason why the, high, the sugar in blue, his heart rate's 154 for the same effort, same wattage, is he's got more hydration, so the heart has to work less. There's less stress on your heart. It's another reason why high fat diet will wear out your heart long term. Because you have to, you're dehydrated, you don't have enough carbs, your body has to work harder to pump the same amount of blood around. Come on, Chris, keep it going, keep it going. In the race to the top, Chris soon speeds away from me. just keeps getting further away and I cannot make my legs go any faster. It's like I'm stuck in one gear. With my heart rate pumping at 200 beats per minute, I just managed to get to the top. So just looking at you two, you've got a big smile on your face. You won the king of the mountains there, Chris. And Zandi, you know, you've bonked out. But this is the thing, this is what we're trying to show here, is that actually, when you're really trying to push it, your body needs the sugar, it needs the carbohydrates. So what I want to do is I want to measure the sugars again. 7.1 your blood yeah. sugars now, yeah. 7.1. Chris's blood sugars are so high because the sugar gel he consumed half an hour ago is still pulsing through his body. And that gave him the fuel to power his muscles up the hill. But what about my blood sugar levels? 5.1. Now that's interesting. All we've given you to eat is fat, and we can't convert fat into sugar. Completely deprived of glucose, our bodies have a dramatic way of making sugar. Protein, in the form of muscle, converts into amino acids, which are then turned into glucose, and that's pumped into the blood, raising blood sugar levels. 
so there's no question you can power your body without sugar. But there is a price to pay. Your blood sugar's going up as got to be coming from the protein. He's he burning muscle to he's make bur sugar. He's burning muscle to make sugar now. I feel quite rubbish. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, this is the last state you'd want one of your athletes to be in. If we've got one of our riders and they were in your state, in the Tour de France, then uh, <laughs> I'd, be, uh, I'd be looking for a new job. So we had identical turbos, we'd got identical bikes, we'd got the same tyre pressure there, so you're doing the same work before and so it's not We've a case... Effectively the same person. Effectively the, the same person genetically. So, you know, the big difference is, is the diet that you've been following. What's amazing about that is I haven't eaten any carbohydrate in weeks and my body can still make enough sugar to get me up that hill. How have you done this? How have you turned your, your dreadful performance out that hill into kind of victory for fat? I got here, didn't <laughs> I? <laughs> and, yes, you did have normal carbohydrate, which is, you know, it's a point for me because your body needs carbohydrate to do exercise like that. And where are you getting the carbohydrate? From your muscles. So you do exercise like that all day, you'll actually muscle and keep your little belly because you're not turning that into carbs, are you? Well, I'll beat you on the way down. <laughs> yeah, because you're still fat. <laughs> banter there with the brothers. So there you go, man. <laughs> Proofs in the pudding. If you want to perform, and another thing is, let's say this the this fat guy's got to go to work after training. He can't function at work when you're under carb and just like ah, spacing out. He even admitted he felt like he's stuck in one gear the whole climb. And then you won't be able, you're not going to want to train. So then your metabolism gets slower, you're burning, losing muscle, you're losing lean tissue, which as a cyclist, not so bad because you get leaner, lighter, but then you, st you keep your fat stores. So you, it's not what you want. You want to be able to be carved up so you can burn fat stores versus burn off muscle, excess muscle, etc., things like that. You want to be losing fat before you lose muscle, definitely. I mean, muscle can actually do something for you, but fat doesn't do fuck all unless you're like an Eskimo. Um, and you could, okay, so if, you, if, you're, if you're underweight, then eat more fat. Definitely, no doubt about it. If you're overweight, eat more carbohydrate and get out and do some shit. Otherwise, all you're doing on the keto diets is you're, you're burning muscle. You're burning away your muscle and then you're lowering your basal metabolic rate. Hey, done, finished, finito. And you don't have to agree with me, but you're still fucking wrong.